Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series. In what could be technically the final episode, if we win this game, we will gain 8 ELO and surpass the 2000 ELO goal that we began the series with. Now, I may push on to 21 or 2200 ELO, but please let me know down below in the comments if that's something you'd like to see or if you'd like me to restart it from like 1200, 1500 ELO, something like that. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Alex and the point of this series, again, is to hit 2000 ELO. All the previous episodes are linked to the playlist below and we've been doing very, very well. I basically explain my thought process while I play so that you guys can learn like how a higher rated player thinks and hopefully break it down in a simple way for you. And then in the post-game analysis, I can use the computer to help flesh out some of the ideas and also play out the positions rather than just drawing arrows and saying moves so that you guys can get a better understanding of it without having to visualize it all in your head. So with that being said, my opponent plays the French defense. And some of you may know what my response to this is, and it is B3. This is one of my favorite openings, and it's known as the Horwitz attack. And the point is, after d5, I'm going to play bishop to b2 and try and gambit this e4 pawn for compensation, which is exactly what we're going to do. You could take, or you could advance, or you could defend the pawn, but the point of this opening is to gambit the pawn away, get some nice pressure on the g7 pawn and you're going to win this pawn back with moves like knight c3 and queen to e2 my opponent doesn't accept the gambit which makes our lives a little bit more complicated but i think e5 would be the most accurate response here the reason being i know i'm blocking off my bishop but this knight is now kind of useless because with this pawn on e5 this knight can't access the e5 square or the d4 square there's no reason for the knight to jump out here this knight also can't access f6 and therefore will probably try and develop through e7 so black can't even do a setup of bringing like this knight to f6 getting this bishop out and bringing this knight into e7 which might make sense if we didn't control f6 so the move e5 is going to present quite a difficult problem for my opponent in terms of it's really going to clamp his position. Also, when this pawn advances to e5 in a lot of French structures, c5 is the idea. But because he's played knight c6 before c5, he's kind of messed up his move order. So I think we have a fairly significant advantage even after four moves i'll see if the computer agrees in the post game analysis but this looks very dubious for black i don't want i don't know if i want to play d4 uh, no actually yeah if he puts anything on b4 we can just play c3 anyway so we're going to go d4 i want to go bishop to d3 maybe bring my queen out if he tries to develop this bishop and take advantage of the weak g7 pawn I've mentioned this in some of my previous videos, but the point is when you have control over f6 like this, it stops the knight from coming to f6, which makes g7 a lot weaker if this bishop moves. Because let's say bishop e7, queen g4 is played, it's difficult to defend this pawn without putting it on g6 or moving the king. Typically, when there is no pawn on e5 controlling the f6 square, a knight goes to f6 which not only stops the queen from coming to g4 to put pressure on the pawn, but if the queen arrives on g4, then knight f6, and then you take on g7, then rook g8 is a common move, with the knight defending the rook and defending the h7 pawn, and then the rook has massive pressure on g2. And often this can end up in like a poison pawn type position. So yeah, our opponent goes f6, which I think kind of just demonstrates how dire his position is because f6 is a weakening move and taking this would be bad because then he takes back with the knight 
He's going to go bishop d6, try and play e5, castle kingside, and he's good. So we're not going to take him. We have plenty of support for the e5 pawn. So if he takes, we're just going to take back and maintain control over f6. The move I would like to play is bishop to d6. Because after bishop to d6, sorry, d3. Because then we are threatening queen h5 check. And after g6, we can take with the bishop. And after pawn takes, we can win the rook. And of course, um, if bishop to d3 and he takes on e5, we can do it anyway. And if he moves the king, then, you know, his king is just exposed and he's blocking all of his development. Now, what I do want to check is after bishop to d3, firstly, he could play f5 to block this diagonal off. But I feel like that benefits us because we can look for g4 in the future. Bishop d3, knight b4. Again, we go for this because knight b4 will be attacking the bishop. Bishop d3, bishop to b4 check. We always have c3. So although that will cut our bishop's connection off to e5, c3 will always come with tempo. So bishop to d3. Like I said, we do have to watch for like a knight landing here with an attack on the bishop and then preparing a move like c5. Because if he can go like knight b5 and then we move the bishop and then he plays c5, he's well and truly back into the game because he has massive pressure on our center. And he gets the typical French ideas then, which, which, which part of the point of this opening is to try and avoid that by making it so it's incredibly difficult for black to get the typical French ideas. And yeah, so he takes on e5, and if we take back, the game goes on. But I believe queen to h5 should just bust his position entirely, because he can't go g6. He can't go g6 because we take it, and if he takes back... we I mean, we could technically take, actually. And after king to e7, go bishop to a3, and the king is out of squares. He's just getting checkmated there, which is crazy. So, wait, bishop a3? Is that not just getting mated? We're going to force him out to f6? Bishop a3, king f6. There, knight takes. Bishop back to b2, bishop d6, defending the knight, and then f4, and that should win the knight. Okay, he's not quite mated, but we should win a knight. I believe that's some sound calculation. This is only move. We don't want to give this check because then the king can retreat to f7. And we don't want to allow that. Because we're trying to cut off his retreating squares, right? We're trying to force him out into the open. We could... Well, we can't actually go for like g4, g5 because then he's going to trade bishops. And we do not want to trade bishops right now. That's something we definitely don't want to do. Because we have so much initiative. We want to try and keep our attacking pieces on the board. So. Takes with the knight. He's threatening to take our bishop. He's also threatening to trade this bishop off. Again. Bishop b2 should be completely winning. Just re-establishing. Not re-establishing. But establishing this pin. Now we are threatening to win the knight. Black can only defend the knight with bishop to d6. Again, this bishop is just getting in the way of the queen helping out. If this bishop was not in the way, he could also potentially play d4 as well to block the diagonal. That's not an option here. He can't counterattack my queen either because we can take the knight with either piece with check. Bishop d6. We can go knight to f3 or we can go f4 to attack this knight. I think knight f3 makes more sense. Now f4 is clean and it wins the knight very easily. 
But Knight F3 not only developed, which is good because then we can castle quicker. But also he can't add another defender to the knight and d4 doesn't work because we just take it. Now it would be very bad to take with the bishop here because after bishop takes your attack is gone. Because you want to be using this pin to its full effect. So knight to f3 looks pretty damn good. Come on, don't freeze on me. Don't freeze on me, chess.com. This is something that it has been doing way too often recently. And, oh, okay, we're back in business. Knight f3, I'm just checking. There's nothing. Again, he can't take either piece because he's pinned. He can't block with d4 because he has no defense on d4. Our queen is completely safe. Let's go knight f3. And yeah, he he just can't defend the knight again. His king is also on f6. <laughs> like, if he doesn't get mated, he's losing a piece. Like, at the very least. Maybe we had a better line, but I saw that we could win a piece very easily. So, you know, I'm going to go for the line that wins a piece. That seems like a no-brainer to me. And by the way, I think this demonstrates the power of this opening, this bishop b2 opening. Sure, he didn't go for the main line. He went for this weird side line, but I think we capitalized on it well. And by the way, I don't know this position. I don't think I've ever seen this position before. And one of the problems with memorizing openings is that when you see a line that is objectively bad, you can sometimes panic because a lot of the time it like opening courses can't teach you every single response to every single position. I don't know this position, but I know the ideas of the opening. And that's how I came up with e5 to control this knight's movement and control this knight's movement. Right? Like, it's because I understood the themes of the opening rather than just memorizing moves. So that is something I'd recommend. Don't just learn moves. Don't just memorize, because you can't memorize everything. Learn the ideas. We could try and be fancy with moves like Queen G5 here, but I think it's just far simpler to take. Like, objectively, this might not be absolutely perfect, but, you know, we're winning a piece. Like, just just, just, just take the piece. There's no counterattacks on us. Our king is completely safe this is not scary in the slightest we can play c3 we can play knight d2 we can play knight c3 i mean knight c3 wouldn't be as good because of d4 yeah he takes here we can take with the queen or the bishop but they're like bishop takes just because our bishop is doing some very putting some very nice pressure on here and for the sake of simplicity i'm going to take the knight with the bishop because we're up a piece. Let's just trade. Keep it nice and simple. We don't have an obvious entrance right now. I think it might just be... We could develop this knight. We could just castle though. Castling here, we are walking into this. But then h7 hangs. So let's just castle. Okay, he goes e5. Cool. And now what we're going to do is try and blow open the center. And we're going to start with c4. And I'm expecting d4. No, okay. Can we? I think we want to go knight c3. So just continue putting pressure on his center. And what we want to do is bait one of these pawns forward. So that we can force it open with moves like f3 and f4. Because his king's stuck in the center of the board, right? Okay, that attacks our knight. Of course you should calculate sacrificing the knight and see what happens. But we don't have anything useful there. So, can we move the knight? Yes. But it is simpler probably just to defend the knight. I'm going to use my A rook to defend the knight because I want this rook to come to one of these files or to support my F pawn push, which, like I said, is one of my main ideas. Now we are threatening to take this. He could go bishop e6 to continue hanging on to the pawn. 
His queen is actually defending it. Um, worth noting. Okay, that's not threatening anything. This also isn't a threat because our queen controls this square. So don't panic for no reason. Let's start by... Mm, I was going to start by taking and then going bishop to f5, but then bishop c6, and I don't like this alignment. So I think we could just force the bishops off the board like this. I think that's nice. And so oh my god, did I just blunder? Oh my god, did I just blunder? Oh my god. What did I just do? That was such a simple position. Oh my god. Christ. Okay, yeah, this is not good now. Oh my god. All right. All right, let's keep fighting. Let's keep fighting. So, queen h6. If rook takes f5, then we have queen g7 winning the rook. But if queen h6, he can take with the bishop. And then his rook covers this square. So, here, here. Not looking good. Can take. And after take, we can try b4 to try and force the queen away. Let's do it. Oh, I can't believe I just blundered that. It was so unnecessary. Let's take here first. Hmm. This is rough. This is really rough. We need to try and take advantage of his king quickly. This arcing is about to come very exposed. Can't believe I blundered that. But it's not over yet. It's not over. At the end of the day, we were up a piece. So, the material should be pretty equal. That's ridiculous though. How did I do that? Um, okay, what happens if I throw this move in? If he takes, then I have queen f6, but he doesn't have to take, of course. After d6, if he moves here, we can take rook g2, king h1. This isn't playable because our knight controls that square. We have some pretty nice counterplay. Bishop's going to be hanging, and we have threats of bishop to e7 there. So, yeah, here, 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 here. And if we go d6, we can go to f7. Then I don't think we have any threats. Might be easier just to go g3. I'm worried about our queen getting harassed, though. She's running out of squares. And on d6, if the king... Like, if the king walks away, then we could come to the f8 square, and that should be very good. But he can just go to f7 and keep an eye on the infiltration squares. Still can't believe I blundered that. Ooh, he takes. Okay. Well, that's promising. Now, b4 is a move. The only way for the queen to maintain defense of d5 is to come back to d8. 
And then I'm thinking about knight b5, trying to play rook c7. <clears throat> that could be a nice idea. If he tries to attack my, like, counter-attack my queen, then I can take the rook. And then take the queen. I'm going to be up a rook there. So, that will be nice. b4, I think, is a very clinical move. Yeah, he goes back. Now the problem is, if we play a move like rook d1, then d5. So this is screaming to me. But, say he plays here. This check he could take us. F4, Rook G6, hmm. Queen H5 attacking the Bishop, Bishop to G4. I'm trying to find a way in. We move our rook over to d1, then this is no longer a move as well. This gives away the e4 square to the bishop, but there is no immediate threat. Knight here. There is this to watch out for. Knight here. Here, here, there. I think we run out of firepower there. So F4 might be the best idea to try and break apart the center. F4. This is the critical line. Wait, there is f4, this rook moving. But then... Here. Here. Here, here, here. f4 looks right to me. My initial intention, like I said, was knight b5, but because of moves like bishop to d3, and the fact that I don't think this actually carries that big of a threat, because when the king moves, f6 will be covered by the queen, I'm not sold. I'm not sold. Now, I don't think our queen can ever get actually properly trapped here. It might get stuck in some kind of perpetual, which is a concern. Now, there is ideas of sacking a rook like this, but I don't think any of them work. Well, if the king goes to h3, he might have this. But even there, we have, what, two rooks and a knight for a queen? But if here, 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 we can always just move the king to f2. And um, we should be fine. The queen is tied down to the defense of this as well. So that's worth noting. Of course, if he plays d4, then he attacks the knight and forces the knight to move, and the knight doesn't have many squares to go to. So that's why I feel like f4 is a must-play move, because we need to strike now. Because if he gets d4 in, he's sorted. Like, I don't see what we do then. This is very, very double-edged, very tactical. Especially because our queen is stranded on the end of the edge of the board. If we could like transport our queen over here or like over here or something, I'd be more confident. But then the king could actually just run away to the king side. So that might not even be that good for us. Yeah, there was no absolutely no need for me to blunder a bishop here. No need at all. But then again, that that is just chess. Like 
sometimes you do just miss simple tactics and you've just got to keep fighting and fortunately we had already put ourselves in a piece up position by that point so it wasn't completely lost although i think black is definitely better i don't think there's any doubt about that the only way white is better in this position is if white has like a series of only attacking moves maybe we're finding them but we'll see we will see spending a while on this and i think that's a good idea because it's a very critical position because if he plays a move like i don't know rook back to g7 this looks very scary with pressure on f6 with pressure on the bishop you know there's still pressure on d5 he's got to be very careful i think this makes the most sense because like i said i don't think this works because here 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 and you can't block with the rooks the bishop hangs so if he goes rook 5 to g6 there and if rook here he can't put this rook here because the bishop hangs so here 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 he does have this move if i take him then here here he wins the queen with discovery i think we've run out of attack there so this looks like the most logical move just to put pressure on the pawn maintain an eye on this pawn anyway if you take then after rook takes i really like my position if here here he pushes then hmm I see he takes really really now we could take with the rook we could also consider rook c to e1 check Where's the king going? If the king goes to f7, then maybe we take? I feel like the moves should be interchangeable though. Interesting idea is if we give this check and then the king moves, then knight to d5. We're threatening to infiltrate with rooks. Here it doesn't work because queen takes. And previously we would have been able to bring this rook here. But actually if here, 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 he has bishop back. And we run out of an attack. Although... Yeah, no, here he just blocks with a rook. So, let's just take. Let's just take. Keep it solid. He does have this check at any time, which I don't like. We can probably do this. And the bishop can't give a check, so we'll take it. He goes d4, I think knight b5. Attacks this pawn and threatens rook c7. And queen b6 doesn't work because he's blocked off his own diagonal with the pawn, so he can't win the knight like that. Or the knight could have just hopped back anyway. This bishop's kind of pinned as well, because otherwise we're going to win f6. I'm not sure what we're going to do next move, in all honesty, and we're down to 2 minutes 38, so that's not good. Problem is, if we give a check on the e-file, he can just shift over to f7. We don't actually have any useful attack, I don't think. 
maybe we can do this. After this, then this, but then he can just block like that. But then we can win the rook. Ah, okay, that might be an idea. That might be an idea. Stacking like this. But we'll have to do it in the right circumstances, actually. Because, say it was our move right now, and we do take, take, here. He can go here. And then if we check like this, he can go here. And then the rook's defended. So would we, we would have to do it in a scenario where we give a check first, force the king to f7, then take and take and here, so that our rook controls the e6 square, and our queen controls g6, so the king would have to move to like f8, and then we can take. Because we you, you can't give the check afterwards, because then rook e5 can be played. But you can give the check before, and cut off the idea of king e6 in the first place. If, again, if it was our move now, and we go rook to e1, and he goes bishop to e6, then f6 hangs, also h7 hangs. h7 is less of a problem for him, but f6 would be, because it would come with an attack on the bishop. So okay, this, this might actually be good for us. This is looking very difficult for him. The problem with queen b6 is if he plays it, and then we just play like king 2, well, g2 probably, just to avoid any sacks on uh, g3. We are threatening knight d5 check, picking up the queen, because the queen steps off the, the defense of um, d5. And if he goes for this, then we just take it. And this looks like a fairly menacing attack. I was trying to look for ideas after like here, here, here of like rook takes and then knight d5, but it doesn't work because then his rook is open to the defense of that square. There might be ideas. I'm just brainstorming. Bishop e4, sorry, queen b6, king g2, bishop e4, takes, takes, queen h7 check. And then if like a rook moves, then we can take, take and knight d5 picking up the queen. But if queen b6, like I said, I'll, I'll go over this in the post-game analysis, don't worry. Okay, that all that calculation is now out the window. <laughs> so, forget I said any of that. It's an interesting move. Is this a threat? Maybe. Okay, so he blocks off this. And he stops these ideas. What if we give a check? If we give a check, he can't go here because then we take the rook. Although, here, you can always do this. My god, this is complicated. I'm also a bit concerned about like here, 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 and then moving the bishop with check. Although we could like do this maybe. And then we'll have like two rooks and a knight. This is crazy. What is even going on? feel like we should give this check, but I don't know what we're going to do after this. Well, we have no time, so we should just go for it. I don't like taking the rook off the C file, because it makes it difficult for him to retreat, because we're, we're going to have discoveries, but this is also an issue, like I said, so we need to do something. Okay, yep. Yeah. His rook defends d5, which is really annoying. So 
Let's give this check. Can't really do this because then we're going to take, I assume. Then we got these ideas. Maybe he can go into that, but I'm expecting king to c7. Knight check, king bear. Don't have anything. Looking at this. This is interesting. He can't. Oh no, he can because the rook defends there. Damn it. Let's do this. Looking at f6, am I going to take it? I don't know. Don't know. This is insanely complicated and I have such little time to navigate this. Which is not good. Not good. This rook could be fragile though. With this bishop blocking this rook's defense. What am I going to do on king b8? I'm not sure. Not sure. I'm trying to look for some kind of. Oh, okay. We could do that. We could go here. Don't know though. Doesn't look amazing. Could give this check. Don't know why I'm giving it, but I am. Don't know what my follow-up is. Gonna have to think of one. I don't know what to do. I have no idea. I think I just blundered that. God, I think I just blundered that. Do I have any tactics? I was looking at back rank tactics. Oh my god. What do I do on rook to e8? Shh. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is game over. Damn it. Mm. Such little time. I messed that up so badly. Very frustrating. And <laughs> I was up a whole piece earlier. <sighs> There's nothing here. If he just trades queens, it's game over. I didn't I didn't have anywhere to put my queen to avoid a queen trade. Maybe I could have retreated, but then my queen's out with the game. You can just take here. There's nothing to it. Yeah. It's game over. Oh my god. So, so bad. I can't believe this. There's going to be some interesting analysis here though. Especially after I blundered the bishop. Like... That position was wild. I don't know why he's not just trading. There's, there's nothing there. <laughs> Is there even any ideas? I don't think so. Desperate move. There's no back rank ideas either because the king just moves. 
I'm just trying to see if he messes up as badly as I did. Because that's my hope right now. But, uh, seems unlikely. Seems very unlikely. You never know. You never know. Found a whole rook. I can't believe that. Rookie A. How did I miss it? I just got so low on time. So low on time. There is nothing here. But he's taking a fair bit with his moves, so... Maybe just hopes of, like, knight b5 and some back rank mate. Doubt it, though. Heavily doubt it. Maybe. <laughs> Clutching at straws a bit. Um... Am I getting mated? Can't go there because of this. Ugh. This just wins a night. Right. Getting mated actually. I'll... Oh, he doesn't want to mate me. Okay. Don't mate me. Uh, there's nothing here. I'm just going to resign. I I kept playing on because I had a knight and like sometimes you can find some tricky tactic with knights, but I can't believe that. Just blundered a bishop and then blundered a rook after a completely winning opening. Uh, I'm not going to enjoy this analysis, but it's got to be done. Boys, I missed a mating three. I can't believe it. I think I'm going to put that as the uh, thumbnail or like the title or something. Obviously, I didn't know that, but I missed a mate in three. Oh my god. Well, this was the opening. The point of this opening is after this, you go, whoops, not like that. Knight c3 to attack the pawn. And then after like knight f6, you go queen e2. Maybe look for g4, g5 to displace this knight and then take the pawn. Your bishop's going to get a really nice diagonal. I've played some other games in this opening, so feel free to check those out on my channel for more in-depth explanation. But he go, we, we go e5 because he goes knight to c6. And I explained what my reasoning was behind that. Interestingly, the best move by far for black is to go d4. I guess to cut the bishop's connection off. Then after like knight to f3. A6. I guess stopping this. Very, very unique position regardless. But yeah, e5, bishop d7, d4. And Blatt's kind of stumbling over himself. We go bishop to d3. And he does not have to take, obviously. He can go knight to h... Oh my god, my mouse. He can go knight to h6 to cover the f7 square with the knight. So here, if we go queen h5, he can just go knight f7. And the game goes on. You know, knight f3, and normal moves get played. We never want to take, because if we take, then the position is definitely better for black. After like, well, apparently queen takes is better than knight takes. Black has a lot of control of the center now. His pieces start to come alive very easily. Maybe castle's queen side gets on the f-file. White looks very underdeveloped here, because I've spent a lot of time moving pawns, and black has been developing. But... As long as my pawns are alive, then it's cool. 
but he takes queen h5 check. If g6, then bishop takes g6, pawn takes g6. Taking on h8 isn't even that good. It's better to take on g6. And this is what I was planning. And then king e7, bishop a3, black has to sack some pieces, and then it's mate. But he goes king to e7, bishop a3, king f6. And here it's mate in free. I missed queen to f3 check because I maintained control over f7. I just completely missed this. I was looking at queen to h4 check, but then he can get back on to the light squares. King g5 is the only move. And then I have bishop to c1. Again, two retreating moves. It's kind of difficult to see. King again only has one move, and then g3 is mate, or queen to h3 is mate. I can't believe I missed this. There's really no excuse with the amount of time I had. But d takes e5 is still completely winning, obviously. And like I said during the game, I saw that I could just win a piece, and I should have a completely winning position. And yeah, I I played that too quickly. I, I, I should have considered my options a bit better. But bishop b2, bishop d6, and again we can play f4 or knight f3. I opt for knight f3. Either way we win a piece. King e7, you go up a clean piece. Taking here isn't amazing because my bishop was very, very strong. But I thought this was just so easy to play. And realistically it was. c4 I was also a fan of, which is the best move. If black takes, bishop takes, my knight's coming out, my rook's taking over to d-file, this is very bad for the black king so he does well to play c6 instead knight c3 queen a5 good move rook a c1 rook a g8 and bishop f5 is obviously a blunder i should be taking here apparently and if you take back then i have this b4 move and the queen can't even retreat to d8 to defend it because the bishop's in the way this would have been very very quick Queen d8, knight d5, king d6, what e6, bishop f5 here works. If takes, this is mate. So many winning positions here. I can't believe that I played um, bishop f5. Here apparently I'm still winning if I find queen to e2. And after rook f5, cd5. If cd5, again I have b4. And again, the queen can't defend the pawn because the bishop is in the way and I take. But what if bishop takes bishop? Ah, then I have f4. And this is a problem. Yeah, even when I lost the piece, I was still definitely winning. But I just missed the idea. I was fixated on queen to h6. I thought it would be a good idea. Obviously, if uh, rook takes, then I win the rook, right? But bishop takes. My queen is kind of just a liability. We take on d5. Rook h g8. d6 check is the best move. Obviously, if you take, then the queen infiltrates. But I didn't see what I was going to do if king to f7 g3 apparently this is a drawn position i mean i don't know the reason i didn't like this was because my knight is completely out of the game now and my rooks have no files to work with really either so i didn't like this um although apparently it's the best idea i go g3 c takes d5 we go b4 but now queen d8 does actually work and a move like rook f to d1 I rejected because of d4, and I was right to do so. Because knight b5, it's not good enough. a6, if we try and give this check, then just king e8. Queen defends f6. Rook is under attack, knight is under attack, my position falls apart. So instead we go f4, which is the best move. e takes f4, rook takes f4. Bishop g6 is a mistake because of rook f2? What? We win rook e1, which is still a good move. King d7. We find queen h3, king c7. And the move here is queen to f1, apparently. I guess looking at f6 like this. If you defend f6, 
then queen f2 and then ideas of knight b5 looking for the dark squares that's so difficult to find that's so difficult to find rerouting the queen like this to work in tandem with the knight cool idea but i wasn't going to find that realistically we went queen to e6 i mean rook e8 here is good apparently Knight b5, king b8, queen d6, queen takes d6, rook e8, bishop e8, knight d6. Here blacks up a pawn, but we have a lot of positional compensation. I trust I would have been able to draw this. But yeah, after rook f8, knight b5 is the best move, which we played. And here I need to retreat, ah, e3, to look at a7. That's kind of obvious. I don't know why I missed that. And if my opponent goes like b6, then knight d4, and then the light squares are weak. <sighs> I said no time. Knight d4 immediately though. Oh, by the way, um, after queen e3, queen b6 is the best move. And after the queens come off the board, I'm down a pawn. But again, I have massive positional compensation. This pawn is weak, this pawn is weak, B6, the b6 pawn is probably weak, his bishop isn't doing all that much. I I, I have faith I could have converted this with moves like rookie 6 and whatever, eyeing up all the weaknesses. But uh, yeah, knight d4 just blunders rookie 8. And I just go down a whole rook. The game is over, I don't think I missed anything here. Yeah, there was absolutely nothing. Although, my opponent... Wait, where could he have mated me? Oh yeah, here. He could have just done this and mated me. But he chose to just win my knight and then... It, it's game over anyway. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm down a rook and a bishop. <sighs> That's frustrating. Because I, I, I played that game very well in the opening... Definitely took advantage of his mistakes, but he kept fighting and he brought it back. I've got to give it to him. And uh, I suppose the rating climb <laughs> inadvertently continues because um, I messed up that game. But yeah, I hope it was enjoyable nonetheless and at least shows you that I don't fake any of my content because I do just completely mess up sometimes. And those of you who have been around the channel for a while, you know that I do just every now and again play some horrible, horrible moves. But so does everyone. Like, it's natural at the end of the day. It is what it is. And it was a good game nonetheless. Good game nonetheless. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.